Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. Here we are on February 10th, 2016. Tonight, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep it sweet. If you don't like the market conditions, just wait like five minutes because whether you're a bull, whether you're a bear, it doesn't matter. We pretty much covered the gamut of market conditions inside of the last just the last few trading sessions over here i mean this this is the type of market where once again i uh i just i go back to the idea you got to be a premium seller because what directional bias is there when the market itself is uh the only way to describe it right now schizophrenic let's look at the s and p's inside of today's trading session which um again i brought up the spx over here uh, we uh, traded all the way up into the 1880 level and uh, fell hard towards the close. So uh, again, that's that's the SPX. And the reason I'm bringing up the SPX is because I want to go over and I want to take a, a detailed look for just a moment at the expected move. So there's only there's only two days left. That's it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Two days left till what? Till expiration. There's a, a little bit of news towards the end of the week. No big earnings. All right. Cisco was after hours. Tesla came out today. Twitter came out today. We'll look at some of them. But um, here we're looking at the SPX, and the expected move is plus or minus 33 bucks. It started the week at about $49. So it's, it's come off. But again, the expected move, it's pretty hot. I mean, there's no question about it. Again, almost a $35 move still being expected with only two days to go to expiration. But that is not really what's catching my attention. OK, the fact that the S&Ps are down seven in the after hours. Well, that, too, not catching my attention either here nor there. So the S&Ps are down in the after hours, but that's on 14,000 contracts, right? Come on. You could even trade 14,000 contracts one day. It's some of the ranges that we've seen. So I keep referring to this. I drew this a long time ago. Up here we have 1911. Down below we have 1871. So during today's trading session, we pierced right into the 1871 kind of level. But if I look on a one minute kind of a clean, you can see we touched it, failed, touched it, failed, pierced through it, failed miserably, touched it, failed. So 1871, which was that uh, the former, what, support has now become the new resistance, okay? I also had mentioned the other day a lot about that 1838 level, and ironically, we're sitting right and around there. Again, some of the intraday trades all over the place. It's the only way to describe it. I mean, uh, again, some of the, the trading ranges that we're seeing, uh, again, today we traded from 1877, all the way down into the, uh, again, at the close over here, and this is the close of the futures, of course, 1840 region. These are extreme days. I mean, we're looking at like 40, 50 point S&P futures moves. Again, extreme range, neither here nor there, until the extreme range picks a direction. Then it means a lot more. What's catching my attention right now, more than anything, it's the bonds. Um, the bonds right now, again, the only way to really describe bonds, these things are trading like it's Armageddon out there. And again, I, I can't stress enough, okay, just the magnitude of the bond move that we're seeing. You know, it was just two weeks ago, I was like, you know, I was thinking about selling those bonds at 161. Then they shot to 161 so quickly that I kind of stepped back from the mouse and I was like, I'm not selling them at 161. Then two nights ago, I actually sold them at 167, bought them back at 166. And here we are almost trading 168. It's getting ridiculous. Okay. And when I say ridiculous, not ridiculous for the fact that you know, the bonds are, are overbought. Okay. You want to step in front of them right now? Because I'm totally nuts and I still wouldn't step in front of the bonds at these levels. I think the bonds are starting to indicate a lot more than just the fact that they're they're overbought. This kind of movement up in the bonds and in the notes, the notes of the 10 years, okay, the 10 years, that's even more of a vertical move, all right? I mean, this defines the word parabolic. And uh, I think really some of the indication you have to, to really kind of resign yourself to is that um, this very well could be the uh, the markets screaming that a recession, uh, either an earnings recession or a, uh, a full on recession is coming. And this is, uh, again, the bond market 
not listening to the Fed. The Fed just said, hey, we're going to raise interest rates. You know, Janet Yellen came out, did some testimony in front of the uh, House today. The markets didn't necessarily like that. But the issue that we have facing us now, and this is not about trade tomorrow. This is about trade months and months okay, down the road. But one of the things you have to start to realize as a trader, the markets very well may okay, brush off anything that the Fed has to say from here on out, because everything that's going on right now is indicating that what the Fed has done to this point, from 2008 until this point, ain't working. And that's what the market is screaming by displaying bonds and notes exploding to the upside. Now, is this going to be short-lived? Possibly. You know, I'll think otherwise if... These notes come all the way back down to like the 128 level, but they have to get there fast and furious, and it doesn't look like that's going to occur. So, again, the volume is fairly extreme in here. It almost looks like, you know, capitulation to the upside to a degree inside both the bonds and notes. Uh, again, I'm as crazy as the next guy, but uh, I'm not stepping in the way of the bonds. And one of the reasons that I uh, this makes me very, very nervous this is hundreds of billions of dollars of capital diving into a product that we all know okay, is used in times of like measures of safety. It's, I mean, if you think of the bond product, it's the new VIX, if you will. The VIX is, you know, my predecessor's kind of fear index. If you look at the bonds to what they are today, and that happens to be, again, this is the notes, but if you look at the bonds of the notes, uh, if you believe that they are being used to mitigate risk of equity markets, then you better get real nervous right now because uh, here we look at the S&P futures, which are trading 1839. There is no support really much below where we currently are. Okay. And I've kind of been saying this all, all along, you know, and in many cases, I think we had to rally to be able to sell off. Question is, did we just see that today? Every time markets have tried to rally, they've just been smacked back. A few other things I want to mention, then we'll kind of call it a night over here. Uh, the VVIX, the volatility of the volatility index, um, is starting to elevate again. So uh, in, in kind of an unusual fashion, uh, the volatility of the volatility index doesn't usually get too far above 100. And if you look back, like historically speaking, when I say look back historically, and you look back like a, a one year daily, okay, over the last year, you haven't seen the volatility of the volatility index up there. Yeah, it's August 24th. Yada, yada, yada. The markets almost crashed, but they didn't. All right. But you look back here again in time frame, even like a, a three year weekly, it's not often you see us elevated to where we currently are for any substantial period of time. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we're back. We're back up to uh, what I would call a very cautious level above 110. And we are in the extremes, OK, of the volatility, the volatility index. Basically, what this is saying is how hard it's going to hit the fan, and we are right at that inflection point. This is the tipping point over here to be watched very carefully in the coming trading days. Another area that I watch considerably is the volatility, all right? And I don't look at the VIX because I, I just, again, my predecessor's kind of volatility index over there. Look at the volatility futures, and the volatility futures right now that I'm watching, it's not these seven days, okay? I'm actually watching... A, a minimum of about 35 days out now. So the 35 day volatility futures, they're sitting at 2484. Then you go 70 days out there at 2485. So they are still in what's termed a backwardation. They're inverted, right? Short duration volatility is still exceeding longer duration volatility. And even when you go as far as like 90, 90 something days out, you realize like, wow, I mean, you can even go what? 120 something days out, the short duration volatility is still well and above the longer duration volatility. It just tells you risk is now, risk is imminent. I'll flip it over to the XLF here. The XLF uh, actually led some of the sell side activity in today's trade over here. Why? Because the bonds rallied. What do you think? So as the bonds rallied, the XLF got crushed into the close. The 20 level is now being threatened. The 20 level. I mean, we're off 25, okay, into 20. So we are officially bear market for financials, uh, neither here nor there. I don't like, I don't like labels. Okay. But uh, again, from 25 to 20, it's fairly extreme. 
that still doesn't catch my attention. What has got my attention every single day, holy, you know, look at the size of the volatility in here. It's really getting heated up now. And even more so than it was this weekend, 30 days out, we're seeing like a 33% implied volatility. Now, again, you're looking at, eh, what does that even mean? I mean, Don, what does it mean? So we got a 33% implied volatility. If you go under studies, and you should do this yourself, you don't have to have any special tools, just go implied volatility. Just pull up an implied volatility study. All right. And after you pull up the implied volatility, look where we currently are with implied volatility. It's as extreme as August 24th. August 24th, it was the end of the world. But we're almost at that level right now in terms of implied volatility. And that's just the last nine months. You have to recognize that what the market's saying over here, let's go back five years and look on a daily. And in five years on a daily, and I'm even going to open up the, uh, the screen a little bit. Okay. You got to go back. All right, all the way into 2011 to see this kind of like action, 2012. And but the, the point I'm making here is we haven't seen the sell side activity be as extreme yet in the markets as we did in 2011 or 2012. And in 2012, the reason you see the spike in volatility, that was when Europe was turning around and saying anything possible to ultimately stave off risk. So with that, I, uh, I caution you. In this marketplace now that you, you sell some premium, you manage your risk picking direction, I really think is futile at this point. You can catch a rally. Hey, more power to you. But the issue is that every rally is just being smacked right back down over here. Uh, unfortunately, it's not not looking good. And I still feel that uh, what we'll probably have one of these days is a wild, wild up day. Okay, that will probably be met with extreme sell side activity either that day or the day after. As we start to come closer to the end of the week, we're going to see retail sales later in this week. Okay, Tesla had earnings after hours up. Okay, Twitter had earnings all over the place. Cisco had earnings. Okay, nice. It was up over there. It's not about earnings right now. It's about the markets, it's about the financials. Keep your eye on the ball with the days to come. Thanks a lot, everybody. And join me this weekend for the premium selling extravaganza this Saturday. This Saturday, right in the Theo chat room. That's when we're going to do it. Again, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us. And uh, see everybody in the chat room, if not Saturday. Bye-bye.